And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, one of my favorite games is Empire's Age of Discovery, which was a reworking of uh, Age of Empires. But Empire's Age of Discovery is a worker placement game by Glenn Drover, which I just really like. It has workers, it has workers that can be upgraded to different workers. And when I saw this, woo -hoo -hoo, this is Galactic Rebellion. Glenn Drover's Empires, Galactic Rebellion. Now this is a space version of the same game. Now it is not exactly the same game. In fact, it's quite different in many spots, but if you know how to play one, it's pretty easy to explain how to play the other. This is a big Kickstarter version I'm looking at. Um, some of my things were upgraded like the coins and things, I suppose. I'm not showing you anything really from the expansion, just the base game. Let's take a look. Galactic Rebellion is going to take place over eight rounds. Each of these rounds is in one of three epochs. So there's epoch one, two, and three. And players are going to be trying to score the most points. There's a big score sheet included. And the players are going to keep track of their points. At the end of each epoch, there's going to be a scoring round. And in that scoring round, players are going to see who controls each of these planets. Each planet has a number here for whoever has the most people on that planet. And a number for whoever has the second most on that planet. These black guys out here are the evil emperor, you know, troops, uh, stormtrooper type things that are there to keep the planets in line. And then whoever also has the most people in the Galactic Senate is going to score seven points. At the end of three epochs, there's going to be points that are given at the very end of the game. There are different epoch three tiles. These are technology tiles that, for example, this one here gives three victory points for every trade route owned at the end of the game. And also players will be completing covert missions which are worth victory points listed in the corner, and your income at the end is also going to be worth points. Now, players are going to have a whole pile of pieces, all right? There's tons of pieces in this game, and each player gets a whole lot of them. And on your board, you're going to keep track of your things, and each turn you're going to get five new rebels. Rebels are the basic workers in this game, although they can be upgraded into five other types of workers. And each, epo each turn, players are going to place different workers out here on the board, and then they're going to do different things with where they place the workers. Placing workers up here in initiative will not only give you money, but it also allow you to change turn order, otherwise the turn order is going to stay the same each round. Placing workers here in planetary influence is going to send them, in the order that they're placed, onto these different planets. The only exception is where this these big ships are, you can't go to those places until those ships move. So there's always two planets that are blocked off, or actually the number of ships out there is based on the number of players. In turn order of placing here, you'll get these trade goods. Trade goods are a way to get money. At the end of every turn, if you have three different trade goods, or three trade goods, period, you'll get one. But if you have three of the same trade good, you will get three. And if you have four of the same trade good, you will get six. And one easy way to get trade goods is if you get a trade route, this counts as two. So if I have these three together, you can see now I'm going to be getting three money every turn. So money is an important thing in this game. Uh, in turn order, each person who has put people in covert mission, this is a spot where workers can stay from turn to turn, can decide to go on one of those covert missions. There are many different covert missions available in the game. There's always going to be three available each turn of the game. Each of them has a location. That location, for example, maybe is Mirzum. So to accomplish this, we look at there's three enemy troopers there. So to do anything on there is going to cost you three. So you spend three points worth of guys in turn order. Each person can do it or pass. Only one person can do it. You will get a bonus, a benefit, and you'll also keep the card for victory points at the end of the game. Down here in the research technology in turn order, players can spend money. It's very expensive. 10 in epoch 1, then 15, then, then 20 in each uh, additional epoch, but you'll get technologies. This one gives you two extra military science cubes. This one here lets you move two of your units from any planet to another one. Sometimes they give you an, an extra scientist every turn or extra rebels. So they're very useful, beneficial things. 
Warfare lets you attack either other players or the Emperor's troops. And Specialists will give you one of the five specialized upgraded troopers for the next round. And you can also put people in the Senate because at the end of every turn, players will bid up to the number of people they have in the Senate. The winner will discard that many people from the Senate and they will get to take an Imperial action. There are three of these cards available. They simply pick one, add three new Sentinels. Those are the evil bad guys to a planet. Add two scientists of your type to a planet, or you know you can take a trade route off one of the planets. So that's a very useful thing. Now I mentioned that there are upgraded people, and these upgraded people are going to be once you have them, and you can get them through technologies or just by going down here to the specialist, will do different things. You have a hero. The hero is the guy with a sword. He's the one that's different for each uh, faction, a different model. Uh, if you send him out to Covert Mission, they count as two workers there, so they're good at Covert Missions. He's one of the two units that can attack somebody else. Uh, if he fights one of these guys, he'll get an extra two cubes. I'll mention fighting in a moment. And he can defend troops on a planet from other people. A trooper, this is the guy with the gun, is kind of like a pathetic hero. He also can invade and he also can defend. And that's basically all he's useful for is for fighting. A diplomat... In the Senate, they count as two people, so you have extra things. And if you use a diplomat here and send them to a planet, when they land on that planet, they become two people. So having diplomats converts people to your cause. Scientists are great because if you put them in the research technology, they give you a minus five uh, cost, so they make technologies cheaper. And if a scientist lands on the planet and there's a white cube on that planet, you can discard that cube to take a cube of your color, which is helpful in combat. Smugglers uh, are very useful. They have like a, a suitcase here. When they go to the trade good box, they get two goods instead of one. And if they come to a planet and there's a trade route there, they will get that trade route. They also count as two people in the covert mission box, just like the heroes do. So players are going to do this turn after turn. Now there's combat's going to happen. You can always attack somebody else or attack a troop. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to start with a certain number of science cubes. So three science cubes. And if you attack another player, you will take their science cubes. So let's say I'm blue and I'm attacking red. I have a, a trooper from warfare and I decide to hit red on one of their planets because I want to win that planet. So I have four cubes. Red has three. We throw them into a bag. We then are going to draw out three cubes. Whichever side has more wins. If you're the attacking player, you will kill two enemy troops unless they defend with a trooper or a hero, in which case you only kill the defender. If the defender wins, the guy that you attacked with simply goes away. Um, and you can also attack these guys. Now these guys are important to attack because at the end of the third epoch, every planet, these guys have been kind of like just standing around for a while. They're there to keep covert missions expensive and such, but they will attack a planet. They will attack whoever has the most troops on that planet. They don't use three cubes. They use eight cubes. Normally they have five cubes if you attack them. But they use eight cubes against your three. And so every single planet on the board, this is called the Galactic War, you are going to start with, so let's say at, let's say at the end of the game, there was you know five orange troops here, and there were three blue troops here, and there's three of the Emperor's troops, and then let's say there's also one pink and one red. These three troops here, first would attack the orange troops. Eight cubes against whatever number orange has. You pull three out, whoever wins loses a troop, unless, it's, unless the orange troop runs out of heroes and troopers, in which case they then will lose two. And if the orange wins, they take out one of these. Once all the orange troops are gone, then this, they will start going after the blue because they're the second biggest and so on and so forth till either they've killed everyone on the planet until they are killed. And then on the third turn, you will then see whoever's left alive on the different planets will control those planets and get the points for those. That's basically how you play. Of course, there's a lot of ins and outs and a lot of things. The, the game comes with a very wordy looking um, reference card for each person. It tells you what all your different specialists do. It tells you how influence and trade goods and all that stuff works. Anyway, let's go to what I think. Now, once again, I need to make it extremely clear how much I like Empire's Age of Discovery, so much that it's in my top 100 games of all time. It is that fantastic. So, I love space. This seems like a win-win. Well, the theme of this game is 
that there's a big evil empire in place. In fact, his theme is like a thing that this guy is uh, Star Wars almost. And each person's doing rebellions. And so everyone's doing multiple rebellions and you're fighting each other and trying to have the best rebellion, which is kind of a weird theme, but okay, that's, that's no problem. But the game has several big problems. Before I get to the big problems, let me talk about the things I like about the game. The game has the same basic feel as uh, Empire Age of Discovery. I really like it. I like having the different workers that go out. It's, a, it's half worker placement, half area control. So I like that. I like both parts of that. I like the ships. I like how some of the planets you can't go and so you're maneuvering the ships. I like the things that they have changed um, when it comes to the, the covert missions. I think the covert missions and I think the Imperial Senate, those are two pretty cool changes. I even like the trade routes that they count as two resources. Those weren't in the original game. And they also incorporated the builder from the Age of Empires that's now a scientist in this game. So, so some things I, I really enjoy, and there's some changes. They got rid of the ships from Age of Empires, which were maybe its biggest sticking point. They were basically wild resources and were too powerful. So I like those changes. I think that the components are really cool. There's a ton of them in this game. But here's where my problems lie with this game. First is the components. I know, I just said I like them this much, but here's the problem. This game's too big. I know I shouldn't have to say that. I'm always talking about how great games are and I love big productions, but honestly, the box of the game, okay? You have to shove in the pieces. I mean, shove them in here. When you put this on the table, you are literally using so much space on the table and it's just problematic. They're all over the place. I mean, each player board is this big. I mean, the scoring sheet is this big. But the player boards are this big. There's cards that have to be laid out. There's extra boards. It's massive and gigantic. And that's problematic, right? Because you need just a massive area to play this game. But the game is not that massive. You're putting out some workers each turn. The second problem with the production is while the miniatures are cool and the coins are neat and everything else, it really isn't well graphically designed at all. I mean, here's the board, right? This is okay. But let's take a look at the, the cards. This is the back of the Covert Mission card. That just looks very amateur. It doesn't look very good. And the whole game has that amateur look to it. Like, hey, this is a cool idea. I really like this. Let's just slap on, you know, here, you do the graphics. And, someone, and the intern's like, okay, sure, and did them. It just should, it did, a game this big with this many pieces should pop graphic wise and it doesn't. It looks generic and this is bad for this game because this game desperately needs that space theme. So I, I feel like those two things are problematic. There's pieces all over the place. I could easily live with both of those things though. Where the game has its biggest problem is kind of, well not kind of, but definitely the combat but even more specifically, the game end. Combat itself is boring. All right, so you have these cubes. Everyone starts with three cubes. I decide to fight another player. We both throw three cubes in a bag, we pull them out. 50% chance, now I get four cubes. Oh, great, so now my chances have gone up slightly against your chances. But they're not really that great. I mean, it's still pretty much an even person's game. Four against three cubes. Now you go up to four cubes. We're back to even. I go up to six cubes, ah, ha, ha. Now I have a 50% better chance than you, kind of, sort of. And battles are pretty important and they're kind of swingy. The original game, if you attack, you just killed an enemy troop. That was it. They've added this element of randomness. And the whole putting a cubes in the bag and pulling them out is a wearisome, boring way to fight. I'd rather there be dice or something, but putting cubes in the bag and pulling them out, ugh. especially on the final turn of the game. Holy cow. There could be, not exaggerating, 60 to 70 battles at the end of the game. And you must take the cubes, put them in the bag, pull them out, see who won, put the cubes back in the bag, pull them out, see who won, put the cubes back in the bag, pull them out, see who won. Fighting a different person now, take out these cubes, put in your cubes, put them in, now we're taking out. Oh, 
Not to mention, these troops are really powerful at the end of the game, the enemy troops, and they are just tearing through everybody. And even if you buff up your military, you might get lucky enough to have an even chance with these guys. They're still going to tear through everybody. It is just a massacre. And it's so bad. It's so bad. I have never seen a game that up until the end of the game, I was saying eight, maybe nine. And then we got to the end of the game and I was like five, maybe four. That's how horrible that galactic war is. It's horrible for a couple reasons. One, the pulling the coops in the bag was, I mean, we were laughing about how silly it was, but it was like, are you kidding me? We're pulling cubes from the bag again? Yes, sir, again. Oh! And secondly, they attack the person who's leading until that person is dead. So the rest of the game, that game where you spend all this time trying to get control of things on different planets, you could be totally wiped out. So the goal of this game is to be second place on a planet and hope the first person beats up these guys so much that when they come to you, you might be able to take one of them out. What? How did that, like, how did, who, who? This is a Euro game. And they threw in some weird Ameritrash ending to it. Blah! Awful. Oh, man. I liked it that there, there was a little few balance things with Age of Empires. I, I, they never really bothered me, but they fixed a lot of them in this game. Then they add this humongous bad element at the end. And then you also get points equal to your income at the end? Really? So super rich people? are like, ha ha, not only did I have money during the game when I could buy anything I wanted, I also get extra points at the end. And you controlled all those plans, but all your guys died. Ha 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 ha. You, wow. This game's hard to come back from. After it turns one and two sometimes, you can see that you're far behind in technologies. And there's a lot of cool features of this game. But for such a humongous sprawling game, which can take up a lot of room, doesn't take that long, or maybe a two hour game. Except maybe the last turn, that last battle could take 20, 30. Yeah, I can't recommend this, I can't. It is $150. First of all, the game is not a $150 game, it's a worker placement game. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think there's $150 worth of stuff in here, but that doesn't need to be. Secondly, wow, that ending just ruined it. Man. I love the original game. I'm keeping the original game, Age of Empires. I'm not keeping this one, sorry. So, unfortunately it's a big pass for me. I had high hopes, maybe for some people that combat is not that big of a deal and you like it, but not I. Dice Tower Judgment, you could have been so much more! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.